We're out here today with the Nikon 70 to 200 2.8 S and my fingerless gloves as well. And uh, this lens just has been performing phenomenally out here in the very cold and snowy and wet and icy conditions and just making incredible photos. On the screen now you're seeing a number of photos and, and also some videos that we've taken this morning. And it really is one of my favorite lenses, usually for portrait and wedding photography, but as a travel and landscape lens, I think it's very underrated. Um, to have a longer lens, especially when you're out here in the, the big landscapes, the big mountains, you want that bigger lens. So you're actually able to, to isolate elements that you want um, off in the distance. Today specifically, uh, crucial to have this 70 to 200 because of the weather ceiling and how, uh, how wet and snowy it just is out here. But uh, shout out Jacob for bringing the canoe. And yeah, let's, uh, let's head somewhere else with the 70 to 200. I've used a lot of nice lenses in my day as a photographer, but the Nikkor Z70-200 f2.8 VRS is probably the best lens that I have ever used. The images that it helps you create are truly next level in optical quality as well as the feeling it holds. These images just feel real and true to life. The optical VR in this lens is also next level, and as somebody that handholds a lot of photos and video footage as well, this is really incredibly helpful. And then moving into photography, this image here was taken at one slash eighth of a second, handheld, no problem whatsoever. We've been driving up to Jasper here and a lot, all the scenery is absolutely amazing. And the problem is that you want to include everything. And what you should actually be doing is simplifying the images. So you're actually just capturing elements. It's going to make a stronger image overall, the more simple the image is. That if you went wide, you capture everything. It's a great image. It can bring you back here. But aesthetically, it is likely a little bit smarter to isolate specific elements. There's also a bit of a, a mental thing behind that as well, that if you photograph all the wide scenes, all of your memories turn very visual. But if you actually photograph just small elements, elements and ignore photographing the wide scenes, you actually retain more of the feeling of what it meant to be here. Maybe that's too high level for, for this video, but it's a, it's a real thing. We're going to photograph with the 7200 and this has the two time teleconverter on it, which means this 7200 becomes a 140 to 400. So I'm going to actually just get the valley. It's kind of out this way here. Um, this texture also very, very nice, but I think this is the frame over here. This lens is an f2.8 constant aperture, which means it's great in low light. Optically, there were no compromises when creating this lens, which is really, really incredible. Another really nice thing to have is the close focusing. At 70 millimeters, you can actually focus at a half a meter, which is pretty unheard of for a telephoto of this range. As with all of the lenses in the S-Line, the images will be outstandingly sharp edge to edge and you won't experience any flare, ghosting, coma, or aberrations of any sort, even far on the edges of the frame. When it comes to video, the autofocus is fast, smooth, and quiet. You won't pick up any noise if you're running a microphone on your hot shoe. There are also two customizable function buttons on the side of your lens, as well as a customizable control ring, you can set that to aperture or ISO, and a dimmable built-in display as well. We're in Canmore and we have just pulled into this park. It's a regular, normal park, but there's just a lot of animals. I'm gonna guess there's 40, 50 animals around here. This is one of my favorite shots ever. Um, I'm very happy that, that she saw that the grass right there was the, the tastiest grass in, in the entire park. And she stopped right there, perfectly framed in the mountain. Uh, super, super happy with that photo. If you wanted to make it more versatile, you could add the teleconverter to this. Uh, what we found specifically in this situation is that uh, having the 7200, you're actually able to show the entire scene, but you can also get some closer shots if you want to just isolate against trees. Animals against trees is nice, but I feel like animals in the mountains since we're here is kind of a much nicer shot. Uh, also, the light is working out really, really well today. So uh, yeah, amazing, amazing stop at this random, random park. Dog park? There's a lake bunch of animals. There are more animals here than there are humans. There's like six humans, including us. We're, we're vastly outnumbered.
We've now concluded the moose tour. They headed off into the wilderness. Super fortunate to have had that experience. Uh, also fortunate to have had the 70 to 200 with the two-time teleconverter on this lens um, because I can go into DX mode so I can get 600 millimeters of reach. So to put into perspective what the telephoto lens did, the scene that we were photographing is kind of this little section just right there. So I was able to make an entire frame. We're at 24 on this lens. Uh, nothing would be visible. You just get a few pixels of a, of a moose way out there. But by having that telephoto lens, it really did make those images come together. Right here at Castle Mountain, uh, just off the highway, literally off the main highway, there's a turnoff point, and it's one of the best angles on Castle Mountain, in my opinion. And also keeping an eye on the mountains up here, specifically the way that the light is just illuminating very specific sections of the mountains. It just, just feels really nice, and I'm happy that we're here. The way this lens captures colors and contrast really is perfect and the bokeh from this lens is absolutely beautiful. It really is the best lens that I've ever used. If you are considering this lens, honestly, you will not go wrong. Thank you so much for watching today and if you are interested in seeing more of our trip to the Canadian Rocky Mountains, there is a link in the description below and come with us on our tour with the Z-Series equipment.